Hey everybody, it is Michael from Team Epic Reads, and this is the September Epic Book Haul. Um, it's, I'm going to warn you right now, there are a lot of books out this month. Let me actually look at the camera when I talk. There are a lot of books out this month, and we have a, a lot to go through today. And I've done my best to memorize them all, but please cut me some slack if I don't do it perfectly. But hello again. Thank you for everyone watching and who is tuning in and who is going to tune in. Um, I see all of your excitement in the comments, and I greatly appreciate it. Hey, Drew. Hey, Jane. Hey, Delaney. Hey, Azura. Um, I hope I didn't miss anyone right now. But just for reference, let me like, oh, I have them in order, but I'm still going to try and show you all of them without taking them out of order. How many books there for us to go through this month? Okay. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Um, but what's everybody been reading? Let's have a chat before I get into it all. I'm realizing these might not fit within the frame, but we're going to try it anyway. Yep. Mm-hmm. I have to go through all of these, but that just makes it such an exciting reading month for us all. Okay, let me do this carefully so I don't ruin this before we even get started. Um, ooh, Midnight Sun, still have never read anything Twilight related, but I've seen the movies for the most part. Um, someone's reading Kingdom of Souls, that is an epic fantasy. Okay, wait, <laughs> I can't talk and put these out at the same time. Um, okay. Someone is starting Children of Virtue and Vengeance. Well, for you all, I can tell you what I'm reading this month. And as always, that is the Epic Reads Book Club pick. And if you don't know what the Epic Reads Book Club is, we have a Facebook page where every month we pick a theme and then we vote on a book to all read together that fits that theme. And the book this month is, I always do this. I gotta unlock my phone. That was a drum roll. That was a really sad drum roll. I don't have a physical copy on me, I'm eating the ebook. Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. Yep, yep, that's a ring light. Um, and it is a mysterious boarding school book. Um, and I think it'd be really fun to read a boarding school book this month because school is a little uncertain for everyone. It's a little different um, this semester and we can all escape into the wilderness of this boarding school. Um, and while I'm telling you what it's about, please comment if you have them favorite boarding school books um, for everybody as recommendations. And so this follows Stevie Bell. Again, truly devious. This follows Stevie Bell, who is really good and really into crime, solving crime. Not good at crime, good at solving crime. Though I guess she would be good at it too. Um, and she goes to the school that's for really prestigious students um, who are talented in something. And she goes there because of her, her ability to solve and understand crimes and her goal going there is to solve one of the greatest cold cases of the century where the original proprietor's wife and daughter were went missing and were found. The wife was found dead, but the daughter was never found. Um, and this mystery was never able to be solved. And so she goes there with the intention of solving this mystery. Um, and it is the first book in a trilogy. I will tell you that. So there things happen, maybe new people die as this happens. And also there is more Stevie Bell to come if you already have read the series, There, it's not over yet. There's a book called The Box in the Woods that's not part of this confined Ellingham mystery, but there's more uh, mystery and murder to come. Um, and also I'll tell you right now, if you do wanna join the book club, it is the BNN hot coffee pick this month. So that means if you pick up a copy of Truly Devious at Barnes and Noble with uh, a hot drink, it's $5. And if you buy it online with the purchase of any other book, it's $5. So go uh, get your copy so you can join the book club and read it with us. Um, hmm. People have read Truly Devious. It is fantastic. If you have not read it, um, <laughs> someone's saying they prefer the Twilight movies, or they prefer the Twilight books to the movies. Sorry, I don't want to mess that up on your behalf. Um, someone's reading Aurora Burning. Funny, that's in the Amy Kaufman book, and we might just have another book by her coming up. So I've talked a lot, but I haven't actually gotten to any of the books coming out this month. So um, let, me, let me get into those for you. The first book that I'm going to talk about for the month of September. Ooh, a really, really fun thing that's happening this month is all of the books that I'm going to talk about today, all of the ones that I'm about to talk about, 
you can potentially win. There will be one winner who will pick for this giveaway. Um, the giveaway password is which. Um, so please enter this giveaway. I think we have a link um, that will be somewhere in the description. And the giveaway password is which. So click the link, enter the giveaway, and one lucky winner will be chosen to win these books. Um, OK. Link in the description. Yes. So the first book we have here for you all today is Punching the Air by Yusuf Salam and Ibi Zaboy. And Yusuf Salam is a member of the Exonerated Five. And this is a story that's inspired by his life and inspired by his story that follows a boy named Amal who is wrongfully committed for a crime. And this is a novel um, in verse that sort of follows his story and all of the anger and rage and emotion he has being incarcerated for something that he didn't do. And it's just a really, it's a really powerful tale. Um, it's got a stunning cover. It's a stunning story. And I highly recommend you guys check this one out. And then next up, uh, I'm going to get a little fantasy on you all. Did, did anyone read Serpent and Dove last year? Because I did, and I loved it. And if you did, I have the sequel, but if you didn't, you should get on that. Because the next book we have here is Blood and Honey by Shelby Maharan. Um, and this is an enemies to lovers fantasy. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try and not spoil anyone, but it follows a witch and a witch hunter who, so he doesn't know that she's a witch and he just thinks she's a criminal. Um, and through an unexpected series of events, they end up wed. And so it's an enemies to lovers. It checks all of those boxes off. Um, but through the more time they spend with each other, the more they realize that maybe their hate is more than hate. Maybe, maybe they actually like each other. Maybe they start to get along. Um, and Lou, the witch, is hiding from her mom, who wants to kill her and sacrifice her to achieve more power. And Reed has just sort of been brainstormed by, <laughs> brainwashed to think all witches are evil, which isn't necessarily the case. However, Lou's mom, definitely one of the evil ones. And it's their story. Uh, it's got a fantastic set of characters. The side characters are just amazing. I'm looking at you, Ansel, Bo, and Coco. And there, I will say at the end of book one, there was a confrontation with Lou's mom without any spoilers. And so the characters are on the run. They're going to need allies. And that's, that's really all I can say. But this is absolutely one of my favorites. Um, so definitely, definitely check them out. Okay, so I'm checking out the comments. All right, definitely. Did I say that already? I said that so many times. Also this beautiful cover, both of these covers, all of these covers, I feel like I am say this all the time, but some really, really stunning covers we got going this month. And then the next book that I have to tell you guys about today is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. Oh, look how that earring shines. Heck yes, heck yes. Um, and this follows a girl named Enchanted who has dreams of being a musical artist. And she's discovered by this really, really popular artist at one in the, in the crowd of one of his shows named Corey. And they sort of enter into this um, harmful, wrong relationship. And she's just so caught up and, and trapped in it. And then one day, uh, Enchanted wakes up with Corey's blood on her hands and she has no memory of what happened. And since he's a, a star, everyone, it's like a big case. Everyone wants to know what happened here and she can't piece it together. And as Tiffany D. Jackson does, this is an absolutely just enthralling thriller story. She's the queen of thrillers. And this cover is amazing. This book is amazing. What a beautiful cover, correct? Um, and so definitely, definitely check it out. Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. Okay, we're flipped. We've got a lot going on. Back, we're back into fantasy. We're kind of in sci-fi territory now. Um, let me check if I've missed anything in the comments. The password for the giveaway is which. Um, there's a link in the description where you can click to enter to win all of the books that I am talking about here today. Okay, so the next book, another beautiful cover is The Other Side of the Sky by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. 
And this, as I hinted at, is both sci-fi and fantasy because it follows Prince North, who lives in a city in the sky where sort of technology rules and keeps society going. And that is the sci-fi half of the story. But it also follows Nim, who is a goddess on the earth below and is unaware that this, this person in this city exists in the sky. And so when Prince North's plane or sky runner sort of comes crashing down to earth, she thinks he is a part of this prophecy that she's had as the goddess who's meant to sort of protect and rule over her people. And it's how and if their stories intertwine. Um, and it's also a romance between the two, but as a goddess, Nim cannot be touched. And they both have feelings for each other. So there's this thing that's keeping it forbidden and keeping them apart. Um, it's the first in a duology, I believe. And it's a really, really epic romance, sci-fi, fantasy, prophecy, adventure. <laughs> um, yes, it fantastic. I love, do love the shimmery covers. I expose my, uh, my ring light, but it does make these books look really good. Yeah, these books uh, all come out. Anything that comes out after September 1st, you can pre-order. And if it's already out, you can buy it now. So um, this one is out next week, September 8th, for anyone who's not watching this live. Um, the next book that I have here is, sorry, I get distracted and read the comments a lot. Um, okay. The next book I have here is Early Departures by Justin A. Reynolds. Um, and as he did with his first book, Opposite of Always, this one, this one tugs on the heartstrings. It's about uh, Jamal, whose best friend Q doesn't know he's about to die again because it's a sort of speculative, sort of present time, sort of speculative novel where uh, people who have been recently deceased can be brought back for a short period of time. And when Q passed, Jamal and Q had gone through sort of a rough patch and weren't really close friends, but now Q is back alive he doesn't know that he was dead and Jamal wants to make right their friendship before he's gone again. But he can't tell Q that he died because his mom doesn't want him to know. And it's just a really intense, emotional, powerful tale with a really, really, really stunning cover. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna take a quick rest. We still have so many books left to go. Um, but please comment. Uh, what's what's everyone's most anticipated so far of the ones that I've gone through? And don't forget, uh, the password is which. Click the link in the description and you can enter to win all of the books that I'm talking about here today. So the next book that I have is from the one and only Garth Nix, author of the Sabriel series. And that is The Left-Handed Booksellers of London. As a left-handed, I was about to say as a left-handed bookseller, it's not that specifically related to me. As someone who's a lefty, I really appreciate this title. And so this follows Merlin, who his, who's looking for the, the real criminals in, in the normal day, because it's a fantasy and like the present world, who were controlled by someone in the, the magical realm to kill his mom. And it also follows a girl who's looking for her dad, and she doesn't know all of this magic exists. You see, there are left-handed booksellers like Merlin, and there are right-handed booksellers. And these people sort of police present day to stop the otherworldly magical things from affecting this London. Not present day, sorry, 1983 London. Um, and so it's this girl who's got a couple clues to search for her dad and Merlin, who's also searching for uh, the being who's, who's at fault for his mother's death and how their stories come together. I just think it's got such a such a cool premise, like magical crime fighting booksellers. Yes, please. Um, and it's from, again, the one and only Garth Nix. So you know this one is gonna deliver. Um, and if you're right-handed, don't worry because they're also right-handed booksellers. They're the more knowledge focused and the left-handed booksellers are the more action focused. Um, so everybody gets to be cool, really. Okay. Um, we have another stunning book here. This <laughs> surprising no one. This is Ironheart. Um, it is the sequel to Crier's War by Nina Varela. And I'm just going to let you, I feel like I could hypnotize you all with this book right now. Maybe. I'm not going to try, but 
Okay. Um, and this is also uh, the sequel. So I have to be careful how I describe this. Can you imagine me just coming on here and spoiling everything for everyone? I'd get fired. Um, this is about a girl named Ayla who, this, you see, it was set in a world where humans had created Autumn to be sort of their playthings, the royals specifically. And then there was a war where the Autumn or the maid beings took over and Ayla lost her family in that war. And as revenge, she wants to kill Lady Cryer. Um, and Lady Cryer is one of the maid who are sort of in the ruling class now. And she does, she's not a bad person. She doesn't know sort of what is going on within her, her kingdom or her rule. And she's supposed to take over for her dad one day. And then uh, Ayla, who is sort of a servant, meets her and they get to know each other and they start to feel things for each other. And so it complicates their situation a little bit. And I will say, without spoiling anything, enemies to lovers, there's a there's a revolution potentially building. And let me just hypnotize you. I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> okay. Oh, let me check the comments. I have not checked them in a while. Someone's gonna read the first book, Cries. Or definitely read the first book before you read the second book. That would be really smart. Um, ooh, what's underneath the jacket? I did check for all of these. It does have a really pretty spine. Yes, okay, check that out. It's backwards for me, but I'm pretty sure it's forwards for you all. Okay. <clears throat> the next book I have to tell you guys about today is Miss Meteor by Taylor K. Mejia and Anne-Marie McLemore. Um, and this, here, let me show you all the cover. This is a story about a girl named Lita and her friend Chiki. And they're in the town of Meteor, New Mexico. And everyone knows it's named for the space rock that landed uh, right at the town. But they don't know that Lita also came with it. And she is technically made of stardust. And her ability to continue existing here depends on her making a connection to this town. And she sort of realizes she has to win this town's beauty pageants uh, in order to stay. And she's has she connects, she reconnects with her best friend, her ex-best friend, Shiki, in order to help her win this beauty pageant where the society in this town has just defined beauty as skinny, blonde, pretty, very traditional terms. And they sort of have to show them that that's, that's not, they, they say all for what it means to be beautiful and what it means to be like a, a strong woman. Um, and so as she tries to win this beauty present, they're underdogs and Lita is also trying to find the strength and sort of the, find it in herself to come out of the closet because again, this just isn't a town where they either of them feel comfortable. Um, and it's just a really, really touching, slightly magical uh, tale for you all. Okay, just checking on the comments again. Cool, 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 no questions. Um, next up, another another emotional one, I will warn you. We have Who I Was With Her with Nita, by Nita Tindall. And this follows a girl named Corinne who kept it a secret, who hasn't, who's not out. Um, and the only thing worse than losing her girlfriend is not having been out and not being able to express or talk to anyone about the fact that her girlfriend died. And so her home life is rough and she doesn't have anyone to connect to and she's just been through something terrible, terrible. And the only person who she can talk to is someone else who dated her, her late girlfriend and how they sort of connect and she gets to know her, who, who her ex was more through this person um, and realizing she wasn't exactly who she thought she was and sort of having feelings potentially for this other girl that her late girlfriend had dated and just a beautiful, beautiful, emotional tale. Um, have tissues ready. So that is who I was with her. Whew. We're getting through it. We only have, I think four books left everybody. Um, to do okay so this is the shadow me series yes drew uh that ended in march uh fantastic six book series everyone check it out okay next up we have save steve and this is by the authors of unpregnant which has an hbo max movie coming soon i think it might be this month 
Um, and it's by Jenny Hendricks and Ted Kaplan. And this follows a guy named Cam who hates Steve. Um, and he knows it's bad to hate Steve because Steve has cancer, but he's a jerk to Cam and he just thinks he's a bad guy. And Steve is also dating the girl that Cam has a crush on. And so he comes up with a plan to make the girl have feelings for him instead and realize he's the right person for her instead by helping to save Steve um, and sort of starting a fundraiser for him. But Steve realizes what Cam is up to and he's not gonna let that happen. And it's just, it's a really emotional, funny, uh, touching read that you'll definitely have to check out. And again, the, their first book, Unpregnant, has a movie coming to HBO Max soon. <sighs> okay, three more, we're getting there. Okay. Next up, we have Disclose by Joelle Charbonneau. And let me just like, you can see, okay. So there's an effect here where there are like words actually printed across the cover that make it so, so cool. And I love the ombre in, in the color change. It's like sick. Um, this is the sequel to Verify by Joelle Charbonneau, New York Times bestselling author. And again, no spoilers. It's the conclusion to the duology. It follows a girl named Mary who lives in a world, in a society, where everything anyone says is the truth. They don't know that there are lies, there's no fact checking. It's the sort of cultivated, perfect sort of situation. And she realizes that, uh, that not everything is the truth and people can lie and they're sort of being lied to and led to believe that things aren't what they are. And she discovers this sort of underground group of, you could call them librarians who are fact checking and keeping the truth. And in this duology, she sort of puts her life on the line to start a revolution and reveal that, reveal to people who don't know that lies exist, that they're being lied to and the world is so much more complicated um, than, than they're led to think. And again, sequel to Verify, conclusion duology, really epic cover. Whew. And then the next book I have, anything? No, I did not miss anything. Next book I have is Thoughts and Prayers by Brian Bliss. Um, and his last book was a National Book Award long list book. And this is a book that follows three students who hid and survived a school shooting. And it's a year later. And it's their stories of sort of how they've, how they've lived in the time, like they're the survivors, but how they've lived since everything happened, whether they've been made the face of the tragedy and sort of overcoming the tragedy or whether they ran from it and how the media cycle and everything moves on, but this event has still stuck so deeply with, these, with the people who survived it. Um, and it's a heavy uh, emotional tale for everyone to check out. Thoughts and Prayers by Brian Bliss. And then last but not least, I have Nobody Knows By You by Anika Rose Risi. Um, and this is, here, let me read, what's the tagline again? The perfect lie begins as truth. And this follows two best friends who are sort of in a complicated friendship because one of the girl's boyfriends is trying to bring them apart um, and it's not a great relationship. Uh, but no matter what, they are keeping each other's secrets even after the murder. Oh. <laughs> um, and so this is a bit friendship tale, mystery, thriller that, that you guys should definitely check out. Okay, I feel like I went through the books fast, but that's just because there were quite literally 14 or 15 books here. Um, but I will run through them again really quickly for you. Uh, and again, if you haven't been watching the whole time, you can click the link in the description and enter the password which to enter a giveaway to win all of the books that I've talked about for you here today. I'm about to run through them one more time before I log off. Um, oh, everyone who's saying it went so fast, thank you. I'm glad it feels that way for you guys. Um, okay. But one more thing, the Epic Reads Book Club pick this month is Truly Devious. And if you purchase at Barnes & Noble, any other book, you can get the paperback of Truly Devious for $5 to join our, or buy it anywhere else, to join our book club this month. So definitely check that out. Okay, so let's go backwards through. We have Save Steve by uh, Jenny Hendricks and Ted Kaplan. Nobody Knows What You by Nika Rose Risi. 
Thoughts and Prayers by Brian Lips. Disclose by Joelle Charbonnier. Toy Was With Her by Nita Tindall. Ooh, I just hit myself in the nose. Uh, Miss Meteor by Taylor K. Mejia and Anna Marie McLemore. Iron Heart by Nina Varela. Again, wait. Okay. Um, the Left-Handed Booksellers of London by the one and only Garth Nix. This tower is gonna fall. It's falling one second. We're good. <laughs> Early Departures by Justin A. Reynolds. The Other Side of the Sky by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. Grown by Thriller Queen, Tiffany T. Jackson. Blood and Honey, the sequel to Serpent and Dove by Sheldon Maharan. Sorry, I get distracted <laughs> pretty good. Um, and last but most certainly not least, Punching the Air by Yusuf Salam and Evie Zaboy. So, whew, thank you all so much for watching. Um, I'm sorry for your TBRs this month. I hope your bookshelves are ready for them. Um, but check out these books, check them out at your local library, pre-order them. Um, and I will see you guys again soon, next month, particularly. Um, thanks so much for watching. Bye. It's gonna be a couple awkward seconds where I try to end it. Oh, did I miss any comments? <laughs> Psych, not bye. No, okay, I didn't miss any comments. Bye everybody, thank you. Oh, nope, it's not over yet. <laughs>